Cobra Kai's return has brought on a high-kicking season one might describe as the strongest season yet. As far as Netflix continuations go, Cobra Kai is one of the streaming services most successful, comparable to Lucifer and Money Heist. Stay put as we share Chris Killian's favorite legacy sequel, the long-standing problem that the show is now fixed in this season, and which former villain is returning for another go-round. In its triumphant return season, Cobra Kai has kicked its way past one of its biggest problems, from the previous seasons. At long last, female contenders had their own skin in the game. By the fourth season's finale, fans made it clear they felt the girls had lost their footing on and off the dojo mat. Seemingly just love interests for Miguel and Robbie to fight over, they had been relegated to the sidelines, but now they're fighting their way back in. Standing on opposite sides of the war between Cobra Kai and Miyagi Do, Sam and Tori couldn't seem to pass each other in the school hallway without a snarl or a brawl breaking out. Despite their fighting skills, Cobra Kai gave them no character beyond switching boyfriends and dojos and hating each other because of it. But thankfully, Season 5 has solved this by giving new females something to do that's as interesting and captivating as their male counterparts. At the end of last season, female characters had been sidelined, with other female dojo members besides Tori and Sam receiving even less screen time. Most obviously, Aisha, who got a whole two-minute clip to explain why she wasn't around anymore. Season 5 is a whole different dragon. Spoilers ahead. To start with, every female character was given something to do that was interesting and developed. Tori, after learning of Silver's betrayal, begins to dissociate herself from Cobra Kai and instead helps Kreese behind bars to take him down and Sam starts second-guessing her ability after she loses at the All Valley Karate Tournament. All of a sudden, the boys are no longer the center of the girls' attention. They have moved on to more independent activities and the boys are often sparked into action as a result of the girl's behavior, not the other way around like in seasons 1 and 2. When Sam has a crisis of identity and splits with Miguel, he finds himself turning to the boys and even trying to hit on other girls at the party. What more is there to know about the main girl Tori? Tori's role as a mole, but unwillingness to bend to Silver's methods, angers him to the point he begins to push her further to prove her loyalty, thereby providing her with more incentive to leave the dojo. Amanda's move out brings a much welcome small-time return of Karate Kid 3's Jessica Andrews, who turns out to be her cousin. Way to keep it in the family, LaRusso, just saying. Carmen's pregnancy is one of the most pivotal moments in the play as it provides a reason for Johnny to finally clean up his act and bury the hatchet with his son, Robbie. In the end, you might be convinced to believe they could be one happy family. Who'd have thought? We haven't even mentioned the show's big addition. The cast has expanded and includes new female characters who proved just as powerful as the OG heroes and villains from Karate Kid. Devin joined the Cobra Kai fold after a particularly fierce battle at the All Valley Tournament where her drive to win was spurred by family tragedy and a desire to succeed. She is so determined that she cannot quit and provides a much needed sidekick for Tori who for so long has gone it alone as the sole female member of Cobra Kai. And it was just in time, too, because the new teacher at Cobra Kai, Sensei Kim Daeun, played by Alicia Hannah Kim, is nothing short of terrifying. She and her team of new senseis trained the growing dojo group in the ways of the warrior, motivated by their shared heritage and a desire to succeed, and Hannah Kim plays this role to perfection, in a nice reversal of stereotypical gender roles. Now that Silver has been arrested, if they decide to go into Season 6, we bet her mission remains the same, and she could be the big bad they need to fight against in order to win the worldwide Sekai Taikai. You'll have to keep watching to find out what Ralph Macchio hopes for from a potential Season 6. The plot has finally found a balance in its playing field, whereas before it kept falling into the water as it tilted too much on the Miyagi's garden pond board. And what's more, they didn't even need Hillary Swank to do it. Swank claims that fans are relentless in asking her when she's going to be on Cobra Kai. In response to the possibility of reprising her role from the Karate Kid, actress Hillary Swank offered nothing solid in response. Meanwhile, the other familiar faces from Karate Kid films past continue to turn up on Cobra Kai. Swank explained the confusion she experienced at first saying, my dog's name is Kai, but then I understood it's pretty fascinating how many people ask me if I'm going to star on Cobra Kai. That choice of words suggests that Swank was at least interested in the popularity Cobra Kai had garnered, suggesting she was 
not wholly against the idea of joining the cast, or is that wishful thinking. It may not be Swank, but there is a Karate Kid star reprising his role and joining the cast of Cobra Kai. After a year of keeping his role under wraps, Sean Cannon is finally able to talk about reprising the role of Mike, your karate is a joke LaRusso Barnes in the new season. Cannon knew from the start he didn't want his character Mike Barnes in Cobra Kai to fall into a one-dimensional stereotype, and his mission to flesh out the character for season 5 was a priority. Kanan was granted his wish. Show creators Josh Held, John Hurwitz, and Hayden Sloshberg brought Barnes into the fold in a way that allowed him to make an impact on the story while still remaining true to his original character. Fans loved and hated that Netflix released only a production still of Mike, so they knew nothing about what his return would mean. Kanan said his wife told him, They put out a photo that looks like you're angry and ready for a fight, but that's not indicative of all you're going to do. Now, as promised, let's talk about all things Ralph Macchio. Nowadays, it's common to see a reboot of an old television series or movie with the original cast members and a new generation. One of the most beloved follow-ups is, of course, Cobra Kai. Ralph Macchio recently sat down with comicbook.com's Chris Killian to talk about the legacy of their film and was asked about their favorite sequels. Macchio had nothing but praise for Top Gun Maverick. I think the Top Gun sequel really, really hit on all cylinders. It was just a perfect way to have a younger cast and hand it down, and then the filmmaking and everything involved with that, they did everything right, I think. In June, Top Gun Maverick passed the $1 billion mark at the worldwide box office and quickly became Paramount's biggest moneymaker ever. The movie has outgrow some heavy hitters, including the Avengers and Titanic. It was able to surpass Avengers Infinity War at the domestic box office. The movie currently holds an impressive 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. If given the choice between Top Gun Maverick or Cobra Kai, what would Machio pick? If you're a Cobra Kai fan and an expert binge watcher, chances are you've already watched Season 5. Again, spoilers ahead if you haven't. It appears the good guys won, for now at least. In many ways, Season 5 is about old wounds finally healed and unlikely alliances cementing for the greater good. But Silver's global expansion plans are still unknown and John Kreese's escape from prison is complicating the supposed happy ending. In other words, it's not over yet. There's absolutely an opportunity for more should Netflix renew the series for a sixth season. Ralph Macchio told The Wrap, There's always fertile ground for more story and obviously the setup with how this season ends helps. He goes on to say, Season 5 does end in a way where you feel like, okay, we've done it. From the LaRusso side, Amanda and Daniel could have dinner and not talk about karate for an evening or maybe a whole weekend, but seeds have been planted that say maybe this ain't quite over yet. If no season 6, would the young actors consider being a legacy cast down the line? You bet. Ona, O'Brien, Griffin, Santo Pietro, and Dallas Dupree Young confirmed to the comic book that this is something they would not miss. Dallas Dupree Young said, to have the opportunity to go back 20, 30 years, I just think that would be incredible incredible to be a part of that. It's nice to hear the younger cast is willing to continue the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai legacy, especially since Ralph Macchio teased a potential Karate Kid cinematic universe. Now, that would be awesome. All in all, is season 5 the best season yet? That's hard to say. One thing is certain, the fight never ends. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.